YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, and we're going to be in another faction focus. Tonight is Pergamon. I'm going to follow the same format where I show the battle first, discuss it, and then uh, go in and finish the faction focus itself. So, uh, good old Pergamon. This is the one I'm doing the campaign with, so it's giving me a chance to try them out in uh, multiplayer. I really don't see any of the new factions being on. powerhouses in multiplayer, but they'll be fun additions. Um, so this time I decided to use some pikes, which is always a risky maneuver. But I wasn't really sure what to face, or what I would be facing from Pontus. They are actually a fairly strong faction. So I've got two Thurio Spears, four pikemen, four archers, one Agima Spear, maybe... Yeah, just one Agima Spear, I think three Hoplites. Uh, two Hippias Lancers, because I find them to be more valuable than the Pergamene Noble Cav. And then uh, I've got, or no, no, sorry, I've got quite a few Hippias Lancers, four of them. Sorry, I, I spent a lot of money on my cavalry. Oh, it's because it's Pontus. I was expecting them to bring very powerful cav. And uh, indeed, he's got two Noble Blood Cav here, two Mercenary Scythian Horse Archers, and then two more Noble Blood, blood Cav. So it's probably a good thing I brought the Hippias Lancers. Citizen Cav can't really stand up to those guys. Though you could use a combination of citizen cav and uh, infantry. So my opponent brings up his uh, mercenary Scythian horse archers, and he's going to open fire on, on my own archers, but I'm going to return fire and uh, quickly uh, get a couple of kills on his retreating horse archers. So it's always a good way just to push them back with your own foot skirmishers. I have the same range. Uh, my Thurio Spears are going to be screening for my pikes, which I expect to get shot at by enemy skirmishers. My opponent has four. Uh, Slingers, he spread very wide with his men, uh, trying to cover a lot of ground, that's fine. Uh, a lot of people love spreading their armies wide, and, and it seems like that a lot of people feel like it's necessary to win. But I mean, really, it actually screws up your mobility pretty bad. I mean, see how long it takes these guys to finish moving, and then if you get charged, I mean, there's definite risk to spreading your troops out wide. There's rewards, I do it sometimes too, like right here I'm doing it to avoid missile fire, and to be able to screen a large area, but again, I'm at risk if I got charged by... Uh, shot cavalry, they would go straight through my spears and potentially get to my archers. So again, you kind of just need to understand the risk reward of spreading out like that. But anyway, so I'm just going to use my Thurio spears to kill a few of his slingers. Uh, probably not the best use for their javelins, but I just want to make sure his slingers are under pressure and not shooting at my pikemen. Of course, I'm not going to stand and, find his, uh, stand and fight his hoplites. With my uh, Thurio Spears, I'm going to pull back and present my uh, my Pikeman instead, which I think I get into a last second phalanx here. Yeah. The Hoplite's got a charge, unfortunately. But my Pikes are going to drop, and I'm going to kill some of those Hoplites and damage them pretty nicely here on the front of my phalanx. My opponent's going to retreat. Yeah, the Pikes ended up losing a couple of men. Same thing with my own guys, so... Anyway... He's probably, again, going to start trying to trade fire with my pikes. I'm just using my uh, Agima Spears here to push back his Scythian Horse Archers. These guys can throw javelins, and they're quite good at it, actually. So here you can see him chuck a couple of javelins. That guy took one to the face. Um, so, yeah, my Agima Spears are going to destroy the Scythian Horse Archer. Uh, these are pretty handy units. They can be used like a very, very nice Thurio Spear. Uh, I like this unit for the most part. It's not particularly super strong, but it does have square formation. It's got javelins. It has expert charge defense. This is an interesting unit. He's, again, shooting at me with his horse archers, but I'm just going to try and keep my guys at a distance. And I'm going to go ahead and just move my pikes forward and attack his men. My archers are focused firing on his slingers, so that hopefully his slingers uh, fire on my own pikemen will be minimized. And so far, I'm doing fairly well in the skirmishing fight, considering how cheap my skirmishers are. So I'm going to go out here and try and throw some javelins at his Noble Blood Cav. He does have a Pontic Sword coming after my uh, Agima Spearman. It's a little bit dangerous for me. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some javelins at the Pontic Swordsman. I do have Expert Charge Defense, so I'm not really going to be concerned if that Pontic Swordsman charges me. And I'm going to try and tie down some of his uh, Noble Blood Cav over here with my Hippias Lancers. And I have engaged his Pontic Swordsman, my Hoplites, same thing over here. That's a fight that the Pontic Swordsman may eventually win, but it's going to be quite Pyrrhic for him. And again, just chasing his Horse Archers a little. It's, I mean, that's a risky scenario. I probably shouldn't do it at all. I'm going to bring another Hippias Lancer over this way. And I was trying to sneak a Hippias Lancer through here, but my opponent does a really nice job here to slow me down with his Horse Archers. And he's going to be able to answer with his Pontic Royal Cat. Now, the smartest move for me here would be to just pull back. But for whatever stupid reason, I decided to just push forward and charge his Pontic Royal Cav. 
Um, but with all these other units in the way, my, my men are very slow to charge the Pontic Royal Cap. In fact, they don't do it at all. And then the Pontic Royal Cap gets a complete clean charge on my Hippias Lancers, which they were already a superior unit, so that was not good for me. You can see here this Pontic Swordsman uh, losing in the fight to my Agima Spearman. Um, so yeah, my Spearman doing quite well here. They are good units. My Hippias Lancers are going to eventually win the fight versus the Noble Blood Cap. It'll be kind of Pyrrhic. Unfortunately, none of my Lancer Cav have been able to get to a position of rear charges, but this Thurio Spear is going to be able to save my Pikemen, who were very near threatened with destruction here from this Noble Blood Cav. And again, you can see that his um, Hoplites are continually having to pull back, and I'm just going to keep pushing with my Pikemen and using these Thurio Spears to protect their flank. Um, my archers, meanwhile, are continuing to uh, try and be useful. I just fired and fired and fired at this Pontic Royal Cav and just really didn't seem to be making any damage with my archers. I should have just kept focusing on getting rid of his slingers. Here, his slingers actually get killed because he didn't move them back. So look at him getting pushed by my pikemen. My pikes have an attack order is what I'm doing here with him, just slowly pushing against his hoplites. And again, he's not microing his slingers, so seeing slingers get killed by a pike phalanx is great if it's your pike phalanx. Uh, not so great otherwise. I did manage to actually catch his horse archers with those Hippias lancers. And my general is actually still winning the fight against the Pontic Swordsman, though it is rather Pyrrhic. And again, I'm winning the fight against the uh, Noble Blood Cav. Uh, it's not a very nice price trade-off for me, though, unfortunately. And this Pontic Royal Cav here, I do get them uh, up close to my pikes for a moment. And it looks like I'll be able to kill a couple of them. And there comes the Archer Fire that I've been trying to get over here sooner. And I'm going to kill quite a few of those Pontic Royal Cav, which is good. The fewer kills those guys get, the better. They're now a very real threat to my men because they are very powerful. Let's see how this fight's going. Still winning for my men. And still winning here as well. But those guys are going to be trashed, and these guys, he's about to bring his Pontic Royal Cab over here, so all that fighting was pretty much for nothing. And then my Thurio Spears got out of position, and they get absolutely crushed by this rear charge. That was bad. Shouldn't have let that happen. Uh, but now I do have Hippias Lancers over here, and I'm going to try and bring a rear charge in against his Hoplites. He goes into wall but his men I don't think were facing the right direction. So it's possible I'm gonna get some kills there. Yep, I do. Get some pretty pretty decent kills actually, considering that was a hoplite unit. Uh, but then I'm gonna bring my Hippias Lancer out of that fight eventually. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Yep, there it goes. But that Hippias Lancer just got some nice kills on that hoplite, which was useful. And I got another Thurio Spear fighting here, and I'm going to outflank his swordsman. But look at my pikes. This sometimes happens when you go to do an outflanking maneuver with the pikes. They'll, like, start doing this and then just march around and face them from the front rather than actually attacking them from the rear. You need to, you have to position your men entirely behind them in order to make it work. I was worried to do so, though, because there's so many enemy units in the vicinity. And then I've got this Lancer free. Um, the enemy Pontic Royal Cav uh, is almost dead. It's still alive, though. My archers are still alive, which is handy. Um, and you can see, though, that this is turning into quite a Pyrrhic fight for both sides. I did manage to kill those hoplites. I need to be attacking here, though, but I'm trying to micromanage all over the map, and neither one of us is doing a particularly good job of it, but it's kind of working to both our favor. So again, got my pikes back here. I'm going to try and put a push here. I can answer with these Hippias Lancers if I need to, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see what actually happens. Now this scares me because his Pontic Royal Cab is about to get free. My general is close to winning this fight. That Agima Spearman cleanly beat the Pontic Swordsman, though there is a price difference, so you would, you would hope a more expensive unit would win that fight. And uh, I do start trying to throw some javelins at this Pontic Royal Cab. So I'm going to end up killing a couple of them. The thing is, though, see how my men are in thin lines? I should have immediately put this unit into square. And I did not. And my opponent gets ready to charge me here. I was so busy trying to throw javelins. Uh, this was just a foolhardy mistake on my part to not be in square. So Pontic Royal Cab into basically an unbraced Agima Spearman. It's going to be a, a poor waste of Agima Spearman, unfortunately. That's going to be killer. And my general does get killed in this charge, which is very dangerous for my troops. So, yep, my general is dead now. That Pontic Royal Cab just got clean away from that. Didn't lose a single unit. That's how shock cavalry gets used right there. It can even be used against spearmen. So, yeah, they, they had one loss. Though I am beating my opponent uh, in, in several areas. His Pontic, uh, his Noble Blood Cab, though, is going to kill what's left of these Hippias Lancers. I didn't have enough of them to finish that unit, so 
the scary thing for me at this point is that my opponent has a mobility advantage, um, and I am out of cavalry. Now I send in this one archer as bait, and then my two remaining archers are going to open fire. I'm getting somewhat low on ammo, though I do have enough left to, to have some good effects. So the Pontic Royal Cav is dead. That's a big help. These swordsmen over here are wavering, but because of this rear charge for the Noble Blood Cav, he's going to be able to save them. And they will get away with some men left. And the Pontic Swordsman eventually winning that fight versus the, uh, the Hoplites, which not horribly surprising. These Slingers worry me, though. They, they have ammo left, and they're shooting into the flank of my pikemen. And even if they weren't shooting into the flank, they're still going to be killing pikemen. This is a big worry for me. I need to get my archers uh, or something to do with these Slingers, but I also worry that it, I, I might need to kill some infantry with my archers. So right now I'm just not really sure what to do with my archers. I have a pikeman wavering here. This is a very dangerous situation. This guy's taking flank fire. Not good. Anyway, his hoplites continue to not get around the flank of my pikeman, though, and this is going to help me. Definitely going to help me. And here I'm going to give chase to his eastern slingers, um, just to try and push them out of position. Very risky, though, because there's a noble blood cab, but at the same time I can try and go into pike phalanx and get some quick kills. Because you can go into pike phalanx even after being charged by cab, which is kind of strange. But um, anyway, it, it does kill few of his cavalrymen, and then I'm just going to go out of Pike Phalanx and keep chasing the Slingers. As Hoplites are getting killed here, he really should have pulled away from this fight. He's starting to pull his Swordsman away because he sees my Archers incoming, but he's still got a very healthy Noble Blood Cab over here. This one is mostly dead, so not a huge worry, uh, but also I don't want to get too split up here, so eventually I'll probably turn around and try and come back in. He's going to go ahead and retreat with these Hoplites finally as well. And I'm going to just give chase to them for a brief moment here with my pikemen out of formation to see if I can route them with a rear charge. And I took some shots with my archers as well. <laughs> so yeah, those hoplites got destroyed. And then I'm going to try and take some shots at his noble blood cab, which is trying to get to my archers. And this is dangerous. My spearmen are all so weak that it's unlikely they can stop these big units of cavalry from getting to my archers. And, of course, you better believe at this point my opponent will be trying to pull through uh, at any cost to try and get to my archers because they're going to feel very threatened by them. So I'm going to be trying to get shots with my archers, but also using my spearmen. And uh, again, see those guys were in fairly thin lines. Um, and see my opponent's just going to pull through because my guys weren't terribly well braced. This basically almost makes my hoplites route the pull through because it gives the attack and the rear penalty. I'm going to have to throw in what's left of my general's unit. And then my opponent's just going to keep pulling past all my spearmen. This is the danger of not having cavalry in late game. I have nothing that can really pin these noble blood cav. And these archers did have a little bit of ammo left. And uh, they are now caught. And these archers over here shattered with 59 men left. That was pretty annoying. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's annoying, but my opponent needed to do that. It's annoying, but it's what he should have done. Mainly annoying because I want them here. <laughs> I did get one unit of archers away alive, and my, my opponent's pulling these cavalry away. But I'm going to keep fending his cav off with these pikemen. There we go. And I'm going to take some shots into the rear while he's running away. And actually get some nice kills there. Kill a few more of his uh, his horsemen. He's coming back with the swords, but he really isn't going to be able to outflank me. I've got three pike units left, two of which are quite healthy. Uh, well, I say that half the number of men here, um, and over half here. So N enough to handle swordsmen in a frontal assault, that's for sure. And I could even pike triangle right here if I wanted to. His slingers do not have any more ammo. So, yeah, technically I could have made like a little pike triangle and this would easily be in my favor, but I didn't think I really needed to and I don't like to do that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot my opponent's men here with my archers. My opponent's probably going to try and, yep, he's going to try and throw some javelins. And I'm just going to keep chasing him off here with the swords. He's going to try and charge me when I'm not ready, that's fine. But he doesn't have enough swordsmen to really pull this off. Um, it's a good move, for sure, because he's got to try and get some kills, but my guys are going to be able to turn around. And then again, just going to stop his slingers here. And my archers are going to run out of ammo here at any moment, I think, but they still have some arrows left, so I'm going to try and make use of them as best I can. My opponent's going to go for them, though. I wanted to square here with my Agima Spears this time, and that will help slow down the enemy cav. And then I'm in Hoplite Wall already right here. Uh, my opponent does go for a rear charge, which is 
a good idea, but it's too late. This sword's been routed. And then these swordsmen are getting killed, too. So, and then that's going to really hurt the morale of his cavalry, which is now trapped in the middle of a bunch of my units. And I think my archers still got routed there. Yeah, they did. But they were pretty much out of ammo. So a very close victory for me as, uh, as uh, Pergamon. Really, Pontus is a better faction, and it took some mistakes there on the opponent, uh, my opponent's part to help me out. You can see my pikes actually got a lot of kills. This is pretty rare. Uh, my archers actually did fairly well, most of them, for the price that they are. These ones didn't. Uh, my Gima Spearmen killed a unit of Pontic Royal Swords and got a few more kills, so I'd say it was worth it to you. My Hippeus Lancer is not as nice as what I had hoped, uh, but Pontus has better calves, so I guess that's to be expected. Anyway, good game to my opponent. Um, that one actually just, you know, barely swung in my favor. Let's go take a look at Pergamon and try and understand them a little better as a faction. And I'm going to talk a little bit about their tools and the things that would make them unique. So let's get in here and go to Pergamon. All right, so I I really like the Agima Spears. I don't know if you can really use these guys as a front line or not because they're pretty pricey. Um, but they have javelins, they have square formation, they have expert charge defense. These are going to be some good units. Now, they don't have hoplite wall, which would be great. Um, but to have square on hoplite wall is probably not going to happen. And, and square is pretty nice. Uh, so it's going to give them some nice tools. Uh, the javelins, good armor, decent hell, great morale. Uh, again, this expert charge defense is going to really help these guys against those high power units. Uh, that's why these guys were able to do as well as they did against the Pontic Swordsman. Um, so yeah, it's, and they've got very decent weapon damage for a spear unit as well. Uh, good bonus versus large, and they also have a nice charge bonus. And with the expert charge de bonus and the and the uh, and uh, yeah the the charge bonus and the expert charge defense, these guys ought to be pretty powerful. Um, so and then the other general you can bring is a Pergamene's noble cab. I like this cab, attack wise and charge wise. It's very weak with armor. And it makes it very questionable as to whether this unit's worth it. Uh, it's going to depend on which faction you're playing, and you're going to have to be careful with that because you can get almost as much bang on the charge out of these Hippias Lancers. Now, the charge is considerably lower. I mean, you're going to get more pound on the charge, but you get better armor by far on these Hippias Lancers. Um, so it's a very risky situation. It's 120 more talents for the Pergamine Noble Cav. Um, but anyway, let's take a look. So melee infantry, they have Galatian Swords. Decent unit to bring here. This this actually probably would have been a better choice in that last battle. Um, I did bring a lot of hoplites, but some Galatian swords would have been handy versus his Pontic swords. They probably wouldn't have won the fight, but they could have potentially done fairly well in that fight. We'll, we'll see, though. Maybe maybe it was not a good decision. Militia hoplites and Galatian spears. Both these units are interesting. Some militia hoplites uh, for 300 talents. These are a decent unit. Decent shields and stuff like that. Potentially useful. Uh, Galatian Spears are great because they have cavalry counter tactics, and then you also have access to Thurio Spears, which are fantastic for killing cav with javelins, um, screening, all kinds of stuff, standard hoplites, and then a Gima Spear, so very nice spear selection here. So spear-wise, uh, Pergamon's going to be a decent faction for sure. A couple of pike choices, which is great, gives them some unit that you can rely upon to hold an enemy force, um, and then you got nice skirmishers. I did not use any pick peltist in that fight. Um, these guys can be very dangerous as well if they get time to shoot. Um, they've got Light Peltis, Peltis, Slingers, Archers. Now, they don't have a great Archer unit. That's going to be one of your drawbacks as the Pergamon. But um, the Pick Peltis is a very nice unit. Uh, again, you've seen Hippias Lancers, Pergamine Cav. Uh, Pergamine Cav, again, is going to be more devastating on the charge. And the Hippias Lancers are going to be a little sturdier uh, in, a, in a grind out. Uh, so, Citizen Cav we're all familiar with, Light Horse we're all familiar with, Tarantine Cav and, and Skirmisher Cav we're all familiar with as well. So that's pretty much Pergamon at a glance. Um, it would be interesting to see what kind of build you could put together with these guys. It's going to depend on who you're playing against, but you know, maybe if you have a faction that's going to come, um, maybe come infantry strong versus you, uh, you know, you have some different options you can take here. Uh, I would be very scared to use Pergamon against Rome. That would be a big concern of mine. You do have Hippias Lancers and Pergamine Cab, which could deliver some rear charges. Let me just show you one of the main reasons why even in this patch, Rome is a, a power to be feared. So a lot of other factions got some boost, and really Rome didn't get any boost. But they're still extremely strong. And uh, if I can find them here, why am I having a hard time? There they are. Let me show you why Rome is just so strong. Just to give you an idea. Um, 680 here. You can throw, I mean, just look how many units I can put in here. I mean, just so many units. You throw in a general, I mean, 
And just, I mean, think about this, and this isn't a particularly great army, but I mean, just think how hard it is to take down, you know, uh, that many units uh, of heavy infantry. And you could even replace a few of these with some Hestati, which, not powerhouse units, but I mean, how easy is it to take down something like that with the Pergamon? What's your killing power? A couple of shock cav? Well, they're going to be getting chased by these guys. All the while, your guys are getting cut down here. So, I mean, Rome is a powerful faction, and that's why I said I would be afraid to face them with Pergamon. The only way you're going to beat them is getting some rear charges um, and just doing your best to hang in that fight. I mean, it's going to be very difficult. Hope you all enjoyed this one. That's all I have for now. I will get into more detail on all these factions later on as we get into battles. This is just kind of a quick overview. Air of Carthage, signing off.